Gates Hopper off the script. Big Show and Ryback, Strowman and Roman, get off my fucking TV and save me the misery. And all you fucking goons, just grab a cold beer. The man of the hour is finally here. JD from New York, 206. It's time for off the script. JD from New York, 206. It's time for off the script. What is What's going on guys? JD from New York here. Is the number one fucking podcast in your subscription box. Drink it in clowns. Drink it in clowns. Right here on YouTube.com! This is Off The Script. Episode 130, part number three, for your official beginning one week away from SummerSlam 2016. Man, gonna be a glorious week like Bobby Roode, and we got so much shit planned going to be unbelievable. I will fill you guys in as we get closer to SummerSlam. There's going to be videos at the S. I'm going to be with Labar at 205th, right in Brooklyn, a couple of blocks away from the Barclays Center on Sunday. I'll be there. In, I'll be in Brooklyn all day Sunday, so if you guys want to, you know, come and say hello, come up to me and call me a fucking goon, please. I, I would appreciate if you all meet me in person and call me a fucking goon. If you're going to be in Brooklyn for SummerSlam, I'll be in and around Doing some bar hopping during the day. I'm going to try and visit Solid Monster during his meet and greet. Say what's up to him and make acquaintances over there. Tell him how much I enjoy his podcast. And then I'll be with Labar at 205th from 4 to 6. We're going to be hosting. Uh, I don't know what we're going to be doing. It's still up in the air right now. But I think it might be a Facebook Q&A or something like that. Something for WrestleZone.com, I believe. Or Trib Live. Something along those lines. But either way, I will be there with Labar. There will be drink specials. Uh, while the show was going on, so make sure you guys come on down and say what's up, and, you know, say what's up to Justin, say what's up to me, I'll be wearing my Roman Reigns t-shirt, get off my TV, call me a fucking goon, tell me how much I hate my fucking guts, how much I'm a fucking clown, whatever the case may be, come up, say hello to each and every one of us that are gonna be there, it's gonna be a good time, man, SummerSlam 2016 is shaping up to be a fucking epic weekend. Make sure you guys go and get your t-shirts, man, speaking of which, the Eve Marie t-shirt is not available yet, it takes a couple of days, you guys have been asking me, hopefully, 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 Monday or Tuesday, you guys will be able to get your Eva Marie Get Off My TV t-shirt. Barbershop Window, we are an official partner for Barbershop Window. That's Pro Wrestling Tees and One Hour Tees, man. The best fucking quality t-shirts on the market for your wrestling needs, man. Barbershopwindow.com. Go to the drop-down menu where it says Wrestling T-shirts. You're going to see off the script listed as an official partner of that website. Get your t-shirts, man. $19.99. They ship internationally, worldwide. So if you are someone who wants a t-shirt and you live in the most remote area of the fucking globe, you guys can get your t-shirts, man. No questions asked. That is a great way to support the show. Another another way is through Patreon. Patreon.com slash JD from NY206. Thank you to those who pledged yesterday after I mentioned it in our part two, man. You guys are fucking unbelievable. If you guys want to read the mission statement on there, please do so. It is worth your time to take uh, a few minutes out of your day to read what I'm about, why I'm doing this, and what I want to do, and where I want to go. So make sure you guys do that, man. Patreon.com slash JD from NY206. Uh, for the most part, unless I fall asleep or I get fucking pissed drunk the night before, you do guys, you guys do get early access. So make sure you guys go and check that out. This video will be up early for you guys on Patreon.com before it goes live at its usual time at 11 a.m. every Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Follow me on Twitter at JD from NY206. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Same name, JD from NY206. I don't know what the fuck you guys are waiting for. And visit my friends over at WrestleRumble.com. 
You guys are going to win money during SummerSlam if you guys enter the pool, man. You're going to fill out the questionnaire. You're going to put your knowledge to the test. First prize is $750. Make sure you guys go and do that. WrestleRumble.com and my friends over at WrestleCrate.com. Use the coupon code JD sent me for an instant 10% off. WrestleCrate.com and on Twitter at WrestleCrate. Thank you guys so much for that. Finally, I did post an epic, epic, epic video last night. It went live about 8.30, 9.00 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Seth Rollins versus Kevin Owens in the final first round match of my road to WWE 2K17. King of the Ring Tournament. And it is fucking epic, man. Following that Ambrose Asylum screw job against Sami Zayn. Make sure you guys go and check that out. I'll leave you all the video information you need down in the description below. If you guys are watching this, please go over there and hit that thumbs up on that video, man. I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. Tweet it to 2K. Tweet it to those guys over there, man. They're fucking awesome what they do. Show them that JD is going to fucking blow this game up this year, man. So if you guys missed that link, will be in the description as well as an annotation on the screen right in the video. Now, not a lot of news this week, man. Not a lot of news this week for Sunday. And I don't even know what the top story is going to be, to be honest with you. There's news on Finn Balor. There's news on McMahon reportedly frustrated with the Usos. There's news on Backstage Heat, apparently with Sami Zayn. Whether this is true or not, I don't know. We'll go over that. And we got news on Joey Styles being released. I got a lot to say about this because I don't know whether this is a troll job or if this is actually le legit. He hasn't come out and said anything yet, but uh, controversial comments were made. They surfaced, and Joey Styles before... All of a sudden, done was released from WWE, so we'll talk about that. But we're going to start off here with Finn Balor. Many believe in WWE that Finn Balor is being pushed too soon, and they want the Demon King character held off. Now, I don't know what that means. The Demon King character, obviously, was something that was really what people expected when it comes to NXT TakeOver. He never overdid it. And now all of a sudden he's on the main roster, people talking about the Demon King, oh, you gotta hold off, you gotta hold off. If they follow the same formula they did with NXT on the main roster, why is this going to be such a big deal? Obviously the Demon King only comes out during pay-per-views. So why is this even being talked about, about his Demon King character coming to Monday Night Raw? If WWE... Shows the Demon King on Monday Night Raw, then they are absolutely fucking blind to the fact about how to build a proper pay-per-view. And build intrigue during a proper pay-per-view. Why give that? Why give a money character away during a Monday Night Raw in which nobody genuinely is going to give a fuck about? I don't know. So, I don't know what they're going to do with this Seth Rollins confronts the Demon King on Monday Night Raw. I hope that we don't see nothing but like maybe... Uh, a, a highlight package of Finn Balor in his Demon King character. Not even that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't even show the Demon King on Monday Night Raw. I'd have stopped myself mid-sentence. I wouldn't even show anything to do with the Demon King on Monday Night Raw. I wouldn't even show that fucking still image of Seth Rollins and Finn Balor with the makeup behind him. I, I wouldn't even done that. Save it for SummerSlam. Because Finn Balor in the Demon King persona is going to get a lot of people to believe in the character. You know, a lot of these goons, a lot of these casuals don't watch NXT. They, they don't even know. I would say a good 35 to 40% of them, 50%, don't even know who Finn Balor was before he came to the main roster because they don't genuinely watch NXT or they don't have the network. They don't know that part of Finn Balor's character and persona. So when they see the Demon King and they see this huge fucking entrance on a pay-per-view and his mannerisms and the makeup and, and, and the, the, the dreadlocks and everything, you know? The, I don't know what he's going to do as far as New York goes. Maybe he's going to do something that coincides with New York as he did with the Texas Chainsaw Massacre in Texas for NXT TakeOver Dallas. Or he's going to do the, the fucking Jack the Ripper in London, you know? It may, I don't know what he's going to do for New York, but you know Demon King, Finn Balor, is going to come and he's going to deliver. And when that happens, people are going to say, holy shit. I'm enjoying this, man. I believe in Finn Balor. They're going to be open to that second side of Finn Balor that they did not know existed. And, the, and Finn Balor is going to make a lot of new fans on Sunday night. I am telling you right now. We all know it because we watch NXT. We know what he's about. But the people, the general WWE audience does not. So, 
WWE superstar Finn Balor and my screen right now, reading this fucking report, had to go blue. I don't know what the fuck's going on. I need a new computer, period. I, I need a new PC immediately, but there's things I have to do before that actually happens. Anyway, where the fuck was I? WWE superstar Finn Balor has been on a roll since he made his way to WWE. A year ago in July, he won the WWE NXT Championship in Japan and managed to hold it 292 days before dropping it to Samoa Joe in April at a house show in Lowell, Massachusetts. He would move on to the main roster in the WWE draft when Mick Foley and Stephanie McMahon chose him fifth overall for the WWE Raw brand. The first night he came into the WWE on Raw, he won a fatal four-way against three other top WWE superstars. He would go on to face Roman Reigns later that night to determine who would face Seth Rollins for the new Universal Championship at SummerSlam. Balor would then beat the former three-time WWE World Heavyweight Champion and give himself a shot to become the first ever Universal Champion. No one in the history of the WWE has won a world title in their first month with the main roster of WWE. Many have won world titles in their first year and even six months, such as the case with Brock Lesnar. Regardless, winning championships has been sort of a trend for Finn Balor, as he's not only won them in the WWE, but he's won them around the world, especially with New Japan Pro Wrestling, where he was a top star, having won three junior heavyweight championships. He had them for long reigns as well, similar to his NXT title run. Seems once Balor wins a title, it remains with him for a while. A lot is being made about Finn Balor and his character as of late, it seems. According to DailyWrestlingNews.com, there have been a lot of internal talks surrounding Balor and his Demon King character. There are some that are calling for the character to be held off until SummerSlam. Despite this, the makeup and costume is set to make its official roster debut at SummerSlam. Finn is expected to beat Seth Rollins for the Universal title as well, which may be due to the Demon King character giving him the edge over Rollins. WWE Chairman Vince McMahon is said to be a huge fan of the demon look and character, which is most likely why they added to much of the story of Balor and the Demon King this past week on Monday Night Raw. He's also a big fan of the way the entrance was done in NXT, and they could even expand on it when it comes to SummerSlam. With McMahon backing Balor's look, it is likely that Vince is high on Finn right now, and that will probably stick for a while. Triple H is really pushing for Finn to be given a shot at the top due to how good he is, and Vince has no problem doing it due to the fact that he wanted Balor to come up to the main roster last year. He always felt Balor was worthy of being given a shot to. There are plenty against the push of Finn Balor, however. Many are saying that Balor has not been on the main roster long enough to be given such a huge push. The thought is that the demon look will get over well and that it will surely mean world titles, which is why they want to hold off on the look until Balor has been on the roster for a while. Those same people would love for someone else to be in Finn Balor's spot at SummerSlam, but the brand split and Balor being 35 years old, the time is truly now to see what they have in Finn Balor, which is absolutely the only reason I would give in this entire argument. And I've been stating this for many, many months now. And I've been saying it well after Daniel Bryan fucking retired. And you guys know if you've been watching me and listening to me, you guys know I have said this word for word. I always thought Daniel Bryan was the guy to pretty much take the throne and the kingdom from John Cena as the face of the WWE. Obviously, that is not the case. Cannot be any longer. Roman Reigns was never that guy. Sad to say... No matter how salty that makes people, Roman Reigns is not a face of the company. Deal with it. Finn Balor always had the look, had the in-ring skill, had the marketability, and he's just got the overall raw talent to be that guy. He's marketable. Finn Balor is probably more marketable than anybody on the WWE main roster. Point blank. Plain and simple. No matter whether he's the demon or he comes out with his fucking bullet club jacket. It doesn't fucking matter. Balor's a good looking guy. No homo. Balor's got what it takes to be the very best in the WWE in that ring. There's very little to complain about, goons, 
when it comes to Finn Balor? Very little. The fact that people are complaining that he's already been given this rocket pack to the top means two things. Number one, they are people saying this that are not as talented as Finn Balor. And there's always going to be detractors because they wish they were in his shoes. Jealousy. Envy. That's pretty much it. But the simple fact that Balor is 35 years old and you need to strike now while the iron is hot. Balor is not this 25-year-old phenomenon coming in to the WWE. I would understand if that was the case. That was the case with Roman Reigns. Roman succeeded with the Shield. Roman succeeded in that role. To have him play his role so well in the Shield and then come out of the Shield and be given the WWE Championship and be given this opportunity at the top all because he was handpicked well before they even constructed the Shield. He was handpicked as the guy. Rollins and Ambrose outworked him. They took a little bit longer to get to the top. But Rollins, no matter if he was WWE Champion or not, they took a chance on Rollins. Rollins wasn't their number one guy. Roman was always their number one guy. Now we see who the weakest one in the Shield really was. It was always Roman. Always Roman. Roman being given this rocket pack is a little bit differently because he struggled mightily with everything. Struggled to get over with the fans, struggled in promos, wasn't really that great in the ring. He's gotten better, but he still isn't where he needs to be, where he can lead a match. Roman is not a leader. Roman is a follower. Roman has good matches because he's the John Cena of this new era. John Cena had, work, had good matches and worked good matches last year. And through all this U.S. Championship Open shit. Because he was given unbelievable talent to work with. That's why John Cena had great matches. John Cena didn't have great matches on his own. Roman Reigns is the same fucking thing. He had great matches with everybody he was in the ring with. Because that's the kind of talent they put him in the ring with. People who are out of this world. Rollins. Styles. Zayn. Balor. Etc. Etc. Roman is not at that level where he's going to go into the ring and be a general and lead a match to make that match great as it all rests on his shoulders. It's not the case. Any fucking clown can see that. Balor is a different story. Roman Reigns hasn't traveled the world for 12 years and won championships all across the globe. WWE has a once-in-a-lifetime talent in Finn Balor. In their, in their company, on their Raw brand, on their roster, on their payroll. Why not give him the opportunity to show everybody why they signed this guy away from New Japan? Why? It makes no sense to me why you wouldn't give him the top spot. On top of that, I said this two weeks in a row. It legitimizes Triple H's work down in NXT. If Finn Balor wins the Universal title and Finn Balor is successful, that automatically is going to trickle down the main roster. Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, Neville, everybody else that was in NXT. Maybe everybody who's been a detractor of NXT will finally start opening up to NXT and realize what Triple H is doing down there is building the future. It all makes sense. Balor winning the title at 35 years old is not because... He's been on the roster for one month and they found their new flavor of the month. It's because he's that damn good. It's because Roman fucked this up for himself. Roman now has nothing to complain about. Nothing. Maybe he gets over with the crowd. Maybe with this Rusev thing and challenging for the United States title, maybe Roman starts getting the crowd reactions that he thought he should be getting. Maybe this works in his favor. Take it, deal with it, run with it. Make the best of it. Roman Reigns. Simple. Simple. Don't worry about what Finn Balor's doing. There'll always be another rematch with Finn Balor. There'll always be another shot at the Universal Championship for Roman Reigns. But right now, we're talking about Finn Balor. And Finn Balor has always been that guy to me, after Daniel Bryan retired, to be the face of the company if John Cena was about to step down or take a reduced role. Simple. He's just that marketable. He's got that look. And at 35 years old, why not do it? Maybe WWE is thinking the same way about Finn Balor that I'm thinking, you know? Sami Zayn, I see Sami Zayn as the next Daniel Bryan. I don't know what's going on with Sami Zayn. We'll talk about him in a little bit, but 
as far as NXT goes, NXT needs to be legitimized, and it's going to continue to be legitimized when Nakamura and Bayley and Asuka and Joe all make their main roster debut. Can you imagine what WWE and the landscape of WWE is going to look like in a year or two? Two, three years, you know? Look at the talent they have. It's absolutely fucking ridiculous. They got the best roster in all of professional wrestling. They don't put on the best shows in all of professional wrestling, which is mind-boggling to me with the fucking talent they possess. But it will come. And I'm excited for the future. NXT has made everybody excited about the future of WWE. And it's it, it needs to start with Kevin Dunn and Vince McMahon about being excited. I, I'm very happy to know that Vince McMahon is for Finn Balor. Because his mindset was never like this. It was always a Batista, or a Cena, or a Reigns, or a Hogan, or a Warrior, or a fucking huge, muscly, fucking steroid freak. You know, the bigger they are, the more fucking, the more, the more hard Vince McMahon gets in the pants. That's the way it was. I don't mean to fucking poke fun at him, but that's the way it was. He, he had a mindset about who a top guy should be. They should be larger-than-life superheroes and these comic book-esque characters. Vince McMahon was always against the small guy. Always. Daniel Bryan, CM Punk, Neville, Sami Zayn. Those aren't guys that, that Vince McMahon gravitated towards. But the way of the industry, the way NXT is being built is changing. He has to conform to what the changes are, 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 are becoming. You, you can't stick to what worked in the 70s and the 80s. It doesn't work that way. It's not going to work that way in 2016. So for me to read... And for me to hear that Vince McMahon is opening up to a guy like Balor, being that he's the size of, well, what is he, 5'5", five, 5'6", five, five, he's 200 pounds soaking wet, winning the Universal Championship, that, that makes me happy. To know that WWE is looking at raw talent and character progression to get over instead of what they look like and basing that on that fact alone. I love it. I absolutely love it. And you guys have to get used to it. You might hate him, you might love him. Get used to it. Balor is going to be a mainstay until he is completely done with WWE. No matter where he is, Raw, SmackDown, it doesn't matter. Balor's work is justified, and a championship run and a shot at his age is justified as well. That's just the way I see it. It needs to happen now, otherwise it will never happen. And then WWE will have that boat sailing it off into the sunset, and they will never know. You, you might as well do it now. Instead of wondering, oh, what if? Do it now. You guys got to get that through your head. Simple. While he has not been on the main roster, he's helped NXT become a household name at this point. Because of him and other stars there, NXT has become another brand for WWE that many, including Triple H, feel is equal to Raw and SmackDown Live. That being said, Finn Balor may not be known to some, but most know the guy well enough to put a title on him. The real question is how long he'll be given to hold the new title and what he can do with it. On top of this, if he can get over enough, many feel Vince McMahon may put Finn Balor at the top of the card, making him the guy over his so-called gem, Roman Reigns. The good and bad about Vince is that he can change his mind at any time. However, if he knows he has money and something, he will push it until there is nothing left. If Balor makes him cash, he'll use him anywhere he has to. This means that politically, Finn Balor may be protected as long as he remains over. Simple as that. Self-explanatory. If Finn Balor is going to make Vince McMahon money, and the money is going to continue rolling in in fucking truckloads, Balor is going nowhere. Roman wasn't a moneymaker. Roman was not a moneymaker. Ratings don't mean money, okay? The ratings are fucking pointless. They're, they're, they're important to an extent, but they're not what defines the product. We know the product is trash because of WWE creative. Any fucking goon can understand that. The creative direction of this company is absolutely fucking miserable and has been for years. They just don't know what the fuck they want to do. And it shows in the ratings. But Balor and everybody else that's working their ass off in that company, in the ring putting on fucking match after match after match and just entertaining us to the point where, you know, we've seen some of the best wrestling in WWE in quite a long time in 2016. What happens in the ring is going to get over. They need creative direction. Finn Balor, if he's going to be making money for WWE and Vince McMahon, this is all that matters to him. 
This is all that's ever mattered to the company. Roman wasn't doing it. Cena made him money. Hogan made him money. Shawn Michaels made him money. The Rock made him money. Austin made him money. You look at every WWE champion that has been before Roman Reigns. They made McMahon money. Daniel Bryan was going to make McMahon a lot of money until he got hurt. Roman wasn't cutting it. In all important areas of what a WWE champion should be and what a WWE champion should do, Roman Reigns did not do any of it, and he failed because of WWE creative. They put him in situations in which he could not escape, and merchandise wasn't there. People did not want to see him. It's going to be vastly different, complete opposite, when Finn Balor sits at the top of the card. I am telling you right now. So that's all there is to that. McMahon is for Balor. Balor's probably going to win the, the Universal Championship, and Balor's going to be the face of the company, like I've been saying for months. Deal with it. Deal with it. What else do we got here? We got Vince McMahon. Speaking of Vince McMahon, he's reportedly frustrated with the Usos. Let's read into this, because the Usos, I'm hearing they're supposed to be coming back to WWE television, but according to several sources here, I read this on a, a variety of websites this weekend, when USA Network ex executives uh, went to Vince McMahon and other top WWE officials to demand better ratings out of SmackDown, Vince decided to shake things up by recreating the brand extension and moving SmackDown to Tuesday nights, airing it live. That was the best decision out of everything. The consensus inside WWE and the locker room was that the brand split would offer more opportunities. But until further changes and additions were made, the company would have to deal with an issue of depth. Before the brand extension, when Vince McMahon or Triple H would conduct town hall-style meetings, the entire locker room would empty out onto the stage to heed the directive. It painted a pretty picture for the live audience and the viewers at home. After the brand split, Stephanie McMahon and Mick Foley conducted one-on-one -on -one, uh, Monday Night Raw, while Shane McMahon and Daniel Bryan had their own vision of SmackDown Live. It was clear during those two segments, especially the blue brand, that the rosters were thin. Additional reinforcements will come in in the form of promoter NXT superstars, an entire cruiserweight division, and potentially the re-signings of former WWE superstars like we've seen or heard with the names like Rhino and Jinder Mahal. However, another knock against SmackDown Live came in the form of the analysis of their tag team and women's divisions, which I've been speaking of quite religiously over the past couple of weeks. Vince and WWE officials saw to it that Raw would have both championships, from those respective divisions coming out of the draft when the New Day and Charlotte were all selected to the flagship show. Apparently, SmackDown Live will be getting their own secondary title soon, but the lack of depth in those areas on Tuesday night is blatantly obvious. WWE is temporarily trying to cover up for this weakness by not booking any women's or tag teams from SmackDown in a match at SummerSlam, a cross-branded pay-per-view, but they won't have that luxury in less than a month from now when SmackDown presents its first brand exclusive special, Backlash. Taking a further look into Tuesday night's tag team division, we find one other glaring omission since the draft. As noted, Jimmy Uso has been out of action while dealing with an injury, and according to Daily Wrestling News, this has Vince McMahon extremely frustrated in the tag team as a whole. There were reports earlier in the year that Vince McMahon became frustrated with Sasha Banks because of what he felt was a reckless in-ring style that made her prone to injury. It's become apparent that similar frustrations are now being aimed towards the Usos in regards to being injury prone. Vince may have to put the top three tag teams on the roster on Raw in the New Day, The Club, and Enzo and Cass, but he also needed an established veteran team on SmackDown, and that came in the form of the Usos. It's clear that the WWE is trying to build the Tuesday Night Tag Team Division around newcomers American Alpha. That would likely be the case if the Usos were healthy and on TV, but in a few weeks, they haven't been, uh, and Jordan and Gable have had the spotlight all to themselves. It doesn't necessarily mean Vince would turn the Usos heel, but they would certainly help provide more depth to a division that includes young teams like the Vaude Villains, the Hype Bros, the Ascension, and Breezango. It's worth noting and interesting that news like this would come out around this time. It is widely known that the Usos and Roman Reigns are cousins, and Jimmy and Jay getting featured more when Reigns was at the top of the card. Reigns has been seen knocked down a peg because of his wellness policy violation. They might not be related at all, especially considering Roman is on Raw and the Usos are on SmackDown, and maybe this was part of the punishment. That's all purely speculation. I doubt that's the reason. I highly doubt that is the reason at all. The main thing 
to keep an eye on now is how the Usos are used in light of Vince McMahon's frustrations. Jimmy is expected back on television soon, as he did get a physical on the WWE tour of New Zealand recently, so we'll have to see what happens when they come back to SmackDown. Will they be used in the way that Vince had hoped, or will their spot go to one of the other teams? As far as I go, and my opinion on the Usos, I honestly think they need to be knocked down a peg. They need a complete rebranding. And I don't mean change their characters. I mean change them to a heel team. They need a heel persona because what they're doing right now as a babyface team is just watered down and it's fucking bland and it's boring. Honestly, you got the Hype Bros, you got American Alpha, and you got Brizongo. I think Brizongo is more treading, uh, you know, 50-50 territory. I don't think they're overly heel. I don't think they're overly babyface. They're kind of in between. The only two heel teams you have right now on the roster are the Vaude Villains and the Ascension. And that's it. And the tag team division as a whole, I've been, I've been complaining about this for fucking weeks now. Obviously, this is a glaring thing. And for WWE to blatantly leave teams off of, off of SummerSlam because they know their division is weak speaks volumes. And what are they going to do when they have three hours to fill on Backlash, a SmackDown exclusive pay-per-view? They need to do something and fast. If you're bringing in new titles, there's no way you can have a division with five fucking teams. I've been saying this for fucking weeks, and now the WWE is concerned about this. They weren't concerned about this when they came up with the fucking draft, and they had the draft completed at the end of that first SmackDown Live episode. They weren't worried about it then. Meanwhile, I was the one who brought it to everybody's fucking attention, and everybody called me a smart mark. Who's smart now? Not you. This is fucking ridiculous. Five teams does not constitute a division. Five women does not constitute a women's division. Especially not to the point where you have to include titles now for everybody to fight over. Get your plans right. Get your rosters right. Go out and sign a few fucking teams and give them the ball to run with instead of holding these fucking wrestlers back. I understand the Usos are a top team, but th that's not a reason to pretty much debilitate the entire fucking SmackDown tag team division. Oh, because the Usos aren't there. Give me some tag team matches. Show me some tag team action on SmackDown. I don't give a shit who it is. Get your plans in line. This all should have been this all should have been thought out before the draft even was completed. But everybody wants to fucking poke fun at me and call me a smart mark and an internet mark and a fucking faggot and a piece of shit and this and that. Who's right now? After all the bitching and moaning and complaining and bickering that I did, who's right now? Huh? Who's right? Oh, JD! All you do is complain, man! Yeah, all I do is complain because I want to see the WWE get better. It's not getting better, and the tag team division is not going to flourish with five fucking teams. Give me a break. Hopefully the Usos come back, and hopefully the WWE starts pushing teams like the Vaude Villains, like the Ascension, like Brizongo. And there's rumors around that I, I talked about last week that Brizongo was going to take a fucking... They were, they were going to split up Brizongo. They were going to put Tyler Breeze in the fucking mid-card and, and repackage him. So you're worried about the tag team divisions, but then you're worried about breaking away Tyler Breeze from Fandango. So that's going to leave four teams. Four teams on SmackDown. Clueless. Absolutely fucking clueless is WWE. They got, a, they got a huge problem. As soon as those titles come to SmackDown, it will be a huge fucking issue. If I don't see at least seven or eight teams on SmackDown alone, this division will fail. If I don't see eight or nine, seven, eight, nine women in that division on SmackDown alone, it will fail. And by that, this draft will fucking fail. Because how much longer can we go on with seeing the same fucking shit week after week? How long are you going to keep she who shall not be named out with another fucking injury and a wardrobe malfunction? How long are you going to keep doing that before it gets stale and boring? She's got to wrestle sometime. She's got to fucking breed cancer in the middle of that ring at some point. She's got to make everybody go fucking blind at some point. It's got to happen. Tag teams need to wrestle at some point. A division needs to show itself at some point. Can't do that. 
with the way things are looking right now, and I'm telling you, if things do not change for the better and you do not add to these divisions, there will be a problem. And I'm going to sit here and I'm going to fucking tell you exactly what I've been telling you. I was right. I told you so. No, oh, but this podcast sucks. This podcast is nothing but a smart mark fucking haven. Nobody fucking has a brain over here. Okay, sure. Sure. I don't know what the fuck you're watching. I know what I'm watching. I know what I'm seeing. I know what I'm fucking dissecting on my television screen. What you're watching is fucking flowers and a fucking nice patch of green grass and fucking squirtle popping up all over the fucking place. That's not WWE, clowns. Okay? Pikachu is not going to fucking come up and fucking be adorable and, and pop up and make everything okay. No, this is WWE and they're fucking floating up Shit's Creek at a high fucking pace. Fix it. Otherwise, it's a failure. Otherwise, this draft will be a fucking failure. Backstage sheet on Sami Zayn. For what? I don't know. Why? He's too good? Does he continue putting on match after match, match of the year candidate? Is he too fucking good for you? Backstage sheet the fuck did he do? Did he walk off with a plate of strawberries and catering and he upset one of the vaude villains? I don't fucking understand why Sami Zayn would have backstage heat. I don't know. Let's talk about it. The catalyst for WWE deciding to execute another version of the brand extension came when USA Network executives complained to WWE officials about low SmackDown ratings. Raw has low ratings. Once the, brand were, once the brands were split, a prevailing notion inside the WWE locker room was that it would present more opportunities to the superstars, especially to those who weren't getting them before this new era. The brand extension thins out both brands and as a result elevates many of the talent that were previously mired in the mid-card. Mid-card mediocrity is what they say. Two of the biggest up-and-coming stars on the Raw brand are Finn Balor and Sami Zayn. Sami Zayn's a fucking beast. There are already expectations for Balor immediately being thrust into a marquee match against Seth Rollins for the WWE Universal Championship at SummerSlam for Sami Zayn. However, it's difficult to tell how the company views him presently. There are minor connections between Zayn and Balor in current storyline, but only one of them is benefiting from it. Last week, Zayn went one-on-one -on -one with Rollins with the announcers putting over the fact that Sami wrestles a similar style to Balor, giving Rollins a scouting session of sorts in the ring. This week, though, neither Zayn or Balor appeared in front of the live crowd, and a peculiar decision by WWE officials. Peculiar? WWE's creative decisions have been peculiar for the last fucking four years. Never mind what happened on Monday Night Raw. The goal behind Balor's angle was clear. WWE wanted to introduce the demon side to the Balor character to a broader audience that may or might not have seen it on NXT programming. What did I tell you? Doing it in a pre-produced segment with editing and effects, enhance the delivery and save the demon unveiling so that the fans would be left wanting more. But not having Zayn appear on Raw doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It should be noted that Sami Zayn competed in a match taped for WWE Superstars prior to Raw against Curtis Axel. But the bigger story is Sami not wrestling on the flagship show. Forbes goes as... F and Forbes is fucking terrible, by the way. There's a bunch of fucking retards over there that should not be writing about wrestling. They actually... Gave me five reasons why the debut episode of SmackDown was better than Raw. Are you fucking kidding me? I also think they did something along the lines with Eva Marie, why she should win the Women's Championship. After that, all your credibility is fucking pissed right down the fucking toilet. Fuck off, Forbes. Go fucking talk about the stock market. Keep your fucking nose out of WWE. Forbes goes on to say... That the fans in Anaheim were cheated by not having either Balor or Zayn appear on Monday Night Raw. Any fucking monkey can understand that, okay? Give me a break. Zayn is coming off a program with Kevin Owens in what was billed as a grudge match between the longtime rivals. But few actually believed that it would be the final time the two met in the ring. It did, however, seem odd that they would be both drafted to Monday Night Raw when the brand split happened and gave them an easy opportunity to separate them and potentially build a more high-profile match further down the line. The Zayn's owens match at Battleground was widely viewed as the best match on the card that night, no question, one of the best matches of the year, period, despite a nasty botch on the apron that nearly left Sami Zayn hurt again. Fucking made my heart skip a beat. Zayn actually won the match, but it's Owens who entered into a significant feud heading into SummerSlam. Kevin is teaming with Chris Jericho to face Enzo and Big Cass on a crowded card that has little room for much else. 
It's odd that WWE officials could not find a spot for Sami Zayn on Monday Night Raw that featured segments or matches with the likes of The Golden Truth, Neville, Sin Cara, and the Dudley Boys, Darren Young, and Titus O'Neil. Please, hang me now. Zayn is clearly over, more over than all those superstars, but the feeling must be that if he isn't already booked in a major program for the second biggest show of the year, then it's not necessary to use him. WWE could certainly add a last-minute match or two to SummerSlam, but it would almost definitely be a time filler or a kickoff program. Considering there are nine confirmed matches as of now with potential to add Cesaro versus Sheamus and Young versus O'Neal again, please hang me. Zayn appears to be the odd man out. Whether it's due to a nagging injury or backstage heat remains to be seen, but the omission from the biggest party of the summer looks to be a glaring one. I wouldn't look too far into this. I, I honestly think that Sami Zayn was just legit the odd man out here. You know, I, I, I really don't understand why WWE didn't go with Enzo and Cass versus The New Day and then give us Sami Zayn versus Kevin Owens in a ladder match at SummerSlam. Loser leaves town. I, I mean, if this is the case, honestly, if this is the case and you don't have enough room for Sami Zayn on Monday Night Raw, move him over to SmackDown. Trade him to SmackDown. I hate when guys like Sami Zayn, especially on a SummerSlam, is not on the card. Move him over to SmackDown. Seriously. What point does that make to fucking keep him off the show? And you can still get him on the show if WWE wants him on the show. I don't see why they would not, but they could if they wanted to. All you gotta do is take Neville and take Zayn and do something on Monday Night Raw. Listen, we're too good to not be on SummerSlam. Do you want to go to Brooklyn and steal the fucking show? There you go. I don't need a story. I don't need a story between Zayn and Neville. All I know is that I care about both guys, and I want to be entertained for 15 minutes. Give me a fucking match. Simple. There, I just booked you a segment for Monday Night Raw. Pay me. That's all you got to do. But if you're not going to use Sami Zayn, and this thing is going to happen again at another major pay-per-view, move him over to SmackDown, where he'll get featured, where they can use him. Because Monday Night Raw is going to be too crowded anyway. With the Cruiserweights coming, and then the fucking other bullshit that they got doing, or they got going on Monday Night Raw. If Sami Zayn could not be fit, if, if Sami Zayn could not be fit onto that Monday Night Raw on Monday, there's no need for him on Monday Night Raw. Move him over to, move him over to SmackDown. Simple. But Sami Zayn could be on SummerSlam if WWE wanted. Neville versus Zayn would potentially be a great opener for SummerSlam 2016. It could still happen, but knowing WWE, they won't do it. And listen, this, this story is fucking unbelievable to me. Joey Styles released controversial comments surface following a Facebook Q&A. A big change is taking place in the biggest professional promotion in the world. Ring of Honor? New Japan? TNA? Oh, WWE. I don't know. Whatever. According to Wrestling Inc., Joey Styles has been released. Released? I, I, he hasn't said anything about his release. He hasn't really said anything. They haven't wished him well in his future endeavors. They haven't made an official comment. So, I don't know what's going on here. Very confusing, very bizarre. After more than a decade with World Wrestling Entertainment, Styles is no longer the vice president of digital media content. And some are saying that it stems from comments that he made recently. On July 29, Styles participated in a question and answer session with Facebook. The interview was taken down shortly after it was completed. Styles also stopped posting on Twitter, which was weird because he's one of the more active social media participants in all of WWE. The last thing that Styles posted on his Twitter was a link to the quarterly reports for WWE. Since the company posted record revenue, it is highly unlikely that this would be the thing to get Styles in enough trouble that World Wrestling Entertainment would release a vice president. Plus, the data is available publicly. Highlights from the since-removed question and answer sessions with Facebook have surfaced online. And as reported by Wrestling Inc., many have noted that there are some answers given that might have sourced a discord for upper management as public relations is a heel deal for WWE. And one of the more interesting words stated by Joey Styles is belt. There are long rumors that WWE prefers the term championship. Styles even joked that about that in an interview. There are reports that stated that the term is no longer banned as reported by 411 Mania. So I, I don't I don't think that would get Styles banned. I mean, if that is the case, 
Somebody in WWE needs to fucking grow a pair of balls, take the stick out of your ass, and stop acting like a fucking pussy. Give me a break. They are belts. They're worn around the waist, just like a fucking belt buckle to hold your fucking pants up. It's worn around your waist. It's a belt. He's not lying. Well, because WWE wants to eliminate words from the English language in their universe, Joey Styles gets fucking canned and fired? I doubt it. But it's a belt. He's right about that. You know? Maybe he knew that the, the word belt was no longer banned, and that's why he threw it around, because he's of the old school. He's of the old school and likes using that terminology. There's no, there's no reason to get upset about that. Joey Styles is cut of a different cloth than most of the people in WWE. He's seen it all. So, I doubt that is a reason. Styles also made a comment about Gorilla Monsoon, one of the best of all time. WWE star and commentator. Styles felt that it was nonsense when Monsoon used to talk about how a good big man can defeat a good little man, always. The comment came up as Styles was trying to defend Finn Balor, a very talented performer who is smaller than the other wrestlers. Another thing that WWE might not have been happy about was Joey Styles advertising that the wrestlers stop doing suicide dives, which is where a performer propels himself from the inside of the ring, over the top rope, or through the ropes, onto another person on the arena floor. Management not having someone telling the wrestlers, or might not like having someone telling the wrestlers how to perform. The company routinely praises the trainers down at the WWE Performance Center, so the comment might have been construed as something negative towards the developmental process. Again, Styles is right in his assumptions. Suicide dives need to be stopped altogether or at least brought down to a bare minimum. I'm gonna fucking say this right now. The way Big E does a dive scares the shit out of me every fucking time. And this is being documented every fucking time he is in the ring. Whether he's fighting whoever it could be, wh whoever is in the ring with him. He either lands on them wrong or he fucking dives through the ropes wrong. And he lands in a way that has me fucking absolutely scared to the fucking brink of me having a heart attack that this guy broke his fucking neck. Give me a break. It is pointless. A guy like Big E, to see Big E move in the ring is phenomenal. A guy his size with the speed and the quickness that he possesses and the athleticism is fucking a great sight to see. But diving through the fucking ropes? I mean, do you want to continue wrestling for the WWE or do you want to fucking remain in a wheelchair for the rest of your life? I, I think that one is very simple. Sasha Banks is another one. As she dives soaking wet, she's 110 pounds. What type of propel are you going to get flying through the ropes onto another woman? Not going to happen. She doesn't land on them correctly. She barely hits her fucking suicide dives correctly. The only one that should be doing any types of dives or moonsault is Charlotte. Because she's got one of the prettiest moonsaults in the WWE. If you can't do it correctly, and it's not going to be as impactful as you want it to be, Stop doing it. Another one is Dean Ambrose. He has the absolute worst fucking dive through the ropes I have ever seen. Ever seen. I mean, it's like me shoving my brother in a fucking playful manner. That's the type of impact that Dean Ambrose gets on his opponent when he dives through the ropes. It is absolutely fucking worthless. It's, it, it makes the fucking match for that 30 seconds cringe. You don't need to be doing it. It adds absolutely nothing of value to the match itself. Stop it altogether. If it's not going to be a luchador flying poncho over the fucking top rope or flying tope or a fucking 450 over the top rope, I don't give a fuck. You want to watch a fucking suicide dive? Watch the Cruiserweight Classic. That's how you do a suicide dive correctly. Not the shit you see on Monday Night Raw. Give me a break. So Joey Styles saying something like that not only is true, but it needs to become a reality. Fuck that. Okay? I doubt that's the reason. Because if that's the, if that's the reason, then WWE clearly doesn't give a fuck about their in-ring performers. And they're going to let them go out there and injure themselves, and then they want to fucking cry when Sasha Banks is not on television for a year, or Dean Ambrose has got to relinquish the title because he broke his fucking arm flying through the ropes, or Big E is in the wheelchair for the rest of his life because he had a suicide dive onto Braun Strowman. Give me a break. I doubt that's the reason, and if that's the case, WWE, stop being a bunch of fucking pussies. With World Wrestling Entertainment splitting into two brands, Monday Night Raw and SmackDown Live again, 
A new championship was created. The Universal Championship. We all know this. Or the Universal Belt is what he said. When asked about it, Joey Styles said that he was not a fan of the name and stated that the fans did not like it either because he's been the most active social media proponent in WWE. So he obviously is gauging fans' opinions about the belt. As part of the job of being vice president of digital media, Styles spends a lot of time on social media interacting with the fan base. If he states that the fans are not pleased with the name, then he's basing it on his information that he receives from social media. WWE.com plays a huge role in the success of the company as the website generates millions of millions of page views every month. That generates tremendous advertising revenue for the corporation. With Joey Styles playing such a big role in that department, it is really hard to believe that he would be released this easily over something that could have more than likely been overlooked. Joey Styles is a really talented and versatile person having worked in front of the cameras and behind the scenes. So if he wants to stay in professional wrestling, he can obviously do so outside of the WWE. Why, again, I read all this and you guys listen to this. Why was he fired again? Or I, I'm going to use the quotation fingers here. Why was he fired? Or why was he let go from his, from his job of vice president of digital media? I don't understand. To me, he didn't say anything wrong. He even brought up Roman Reigns in this, in this Facebook question and answer. Whoever that new broad is that they got doing the interviews, I forgot her fucking name. She's down at NXT and she's done things here and there with WWE.com. She read something with Roman Reigns and the question went like, why has WWE forced Roman Reigns upon us as a babyface and not turned him heel? She didn't even utter the name of Roman Reigns. She was so scared to read the fucking question that she shifted the paper over to Joey Styles for him to finish the fucking paper, or uh, the question on the paper, and he gave a very, very good answer. He didn't speak down about Roman Reigns. He didn't speak down about anything regarding Roman Reigns' push. He merely said, why would you ever question Vince McMahon? If Vince McMahon wants it, He's been more successful than wrong in the past, more times than, than not. He's been, more, he's, he's been right more times than wrong. Why would you ever go against what the chairman wants? He has his finger on the pulse. He knows what the people want. If he thinks it's going to work out, he's going to do it. So why would you ever question Vince McMahon? That's exactly what he said. That's, what he, that's exactly what Joey Styles said. He didn't speak bad about Vince. He didn't speak bad about the WWE. He didn't speak bad about Roman Reigns. He didn't, he didn't do any of those things. But this fucking goon... This, this broad, I forgot her fucking name. If somebody can let me know, I, I, I forgot her name. I don't know who she is. She's brand new. She's been there for like two months now. Didn't even want to read the fucking comment as, as, as if she knew something was going to happen. Give me a break. If WWE released Joey Styles based on any of this information, they are fucking pussies. Conor McGregor might be right. WWE and everybody involved in this company are a bunch of fucking pussies. Joey Styles is not going to fucking be unemployed very long, because I would love to see him back in a commentator role. In fact, take fucking JBL off of SmackDown and move Joey Styles to SmackDown. Or if you want Joey Styles back in a commentating role, put him next to Tom Phillips in NXT. I'd love to see Phillips and Joey Styles commentate NXT. That would be fantastic. Obviously, he's still a valuable asset to any company he goes to. Why they would release him based on what was read here, I have no fucking idea. He hasn't tweeted. They haven't made an official statement. They haven't wished him well in his future endeavors. I don't know. It might be a fucking troll. I have no fucking clue. Hopefully we find some resolution to this because if this is really the case, I would love to know what fucking had Joey Styles released from his contract. I would love to know. I would love to know it. And, and if we find out from that point on, we'll dissect it even further and continue to say and continue to think that everybody in WWE is a bunch of fucking Pussies. I understand someone talking bad about the company if you're employed with that company. I understand that, but Joey Styles did no such thing. Give me a fucking break. And that is off the script, guys. Thank you so much. Hope you enjoyed part number three. There will be no part four. I got other things planned for you guys. I might do a video on Monday pretty much telling you guys my absolute favorite SummerSlam moment of all time time. We'll go over that. I was thinking about doing a top five or a top ten SummerSlam matches. I, I, I mean, everybody's doing that. I, I, I want to give you one, and I want to give you a reason why it was great and the importance behind it, and we're going to discuss it, and I might do that, so look forward to that. Plus, we're going to have SummerSlam simulations with the top, I, I get, how many matches? You got, you got Ambrose Ziggler, you got 
Uh, you got uh, Balor and Rollins, and you got Reigns and Rusev, and you got uh, Orton and Lesnar. We'll probably do those four matches, and I'll do commentary over them. So we'll, we'll have fun with that, and we'll release them through the week. And whatever else got going on, man. You know, off the script is going to be there. I'm going to be live with I'm going to be live with Labar. We got out of nowhere. I'm going to try and get good mic work on out of nowhere. And it's just going to be a crazy fucking week, man. Crazy fucking week. So thank you guys so much. Hit that thumbs up. Let me know what you guys are thinking about everything in this video. Leave me a comment. Excuse me. Jesus Christ, the fucking beer I had. The fucking beer I was drinking, man. Jesus Christ. Anyway, um, let me know what you guys are thinking down below and what you're thinking of all the top stories and all the all this bullshit here in part three and like i said hit that thumbs up i'll be back on monday with more great wwe content until then this is jd this is off the script and i'll see you guys right back here for episode 131 of off the script talk to you later